I hope you came today to thank the Lord Jesus because everything we have is a gift from God. Every time we take a breath, it's because God said we should take a breath. So I hope you came to say thank you to Jesus. Well, here we are. It's summer in the city. We are continuing our sermon series, The Gospel According to the Lion King. And we're a little bit more laid back. We're in the African safari. And um, hold on. I think I, I think I see I see Simba. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. I got it. Oh, there's Nala. Zazu! Oh, sorry, y'all. <laughs> I just get so excited. <laughs> I get so excited. <sighs> today, today we're, we're going to talk about Simba and Nala and Zazu and their expo exploration together and how Simba just can't wait to be king. And, and we're going to begin to talk about that um, because we're going to start in Colossians. We talked a little bit about Colossians last week. It's in the back of your Bible, or you can pull out your electronic devices and, 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 and go to Colossians. Colossians is one of the epistles from Paul, one of the letters of Paul. And we think that Paul wrote this letter while he was in jail. There were four letters that we think Paul wrote in jail. And he wrote to the church in Colossians because they decided that they knew more than Jesus. 
They did. They decided that Jesus was not enough and that since they were in the center, in Colossae, they were in the center of philosophy and of knowledge that they would take a little bit of their knowledge from here and a little bit of their knowledge from here and a little bit of their knowledge from here and a little bit of their knowledge from here and they would sprinkle in a little bit of Jesus and they would come up with their own thing and call it Jesus. And Paul says, that's not how it works. <laughs> and, and while Paul was writing specifically to the church at Colossians, I think this is a timely message to the church in 2019. Because we've decided that we can take the gospel of Jesus Christ that transforms all on its own, the good news, that's what Paul told us last week, right? The good news of Jesus Christ doesn't need us to, we made up a word last week, y'all, we called it. We don't need it to me, be me-ized, right? We don't need to me-ize the gospel of Jesus Christ because the good news of Jesus all on its own transforms. So this week, we start in the second half of the first chapter of Colossians, and, and we start actually with a song. It, it's an old hymn that Paul has adjusted a little bit for the people in the church in Colossians, and it says in the New Living Transa Translation, it says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ and through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet, now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are homely, holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world. And I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. 
I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God, perfect in their relationship to Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you are indeed our worthy and our holy God. So come and fall afresh on us. Blow a fresh wind and a fresh fire through this place. We have not come to hear a word from Jasmine. But we have come, O oh God, to hear a word from you. So anoint this, your servant, from her head to her toes, O oh God, for such a time as this. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Take anything that would be a distraction, anything that would be an interruption and block it out and send it out of this place in the name of Jesus so that we might focus on you and we might focus on how you might transform us today, oh God. Holy Ghost, have your way. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. So we've learned from Paul in the last two weeks that we are to pay attention to our work. That we're not to get in the way of what else is going on in the kingdom of God because God has created us for our own special work. And if we'll just stay in our lane, then God will take care of everything else. Amen? Because when we get out of our lane, then we allow evil to be unleashed. And when we allow evil to be unleashed, then things get out of order. And, and when things get out of order, then God has to work extra overtime to put them back in order. And if we just do what we were supposed to do in the first place, oh, you don't hear me this morning. They haven't had the week I've had. <laughs> And, and then last week we talked about, you know, that if you just remember who you are, remember the waters of baptism, remember that as the children of God, Remember that as the heirs of the Most High God, that as the siblings of Jesus Christ, if you'll just remember who you are, there is no reason to fear. There is no reason to doubt. And we can do anything but fail. Amen? So today... How many of you just can't wait to be king? Come on, you can tell the truth. My mama's here this morning. She always said, tell the truth, shame the devil. 
You, you know, some of us just can't wait to be king, and, and it's all right. You know, I haven't been a Burger King in a long time, but, but they brought me a Burger King crown this morning to help us remember, you know, that, that sometimes we act like we, we just can't wait to, to be king. We, we just can't wait to have everything our way and to do things our way and to interpret things our way and to try to make God our God. God and to try to make Jesus our puppet and to try to make the Holy Spirit do things the way we want the Holy Spirit to do them. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about this morning. You know, some of us just can't wait <laughs> to be king. Because, you know, if I were king, <laughs> some things would be different. If I were king, some things would be different in the world. If I were king, some things would be a little bit more the way I want them to be. If I were king, maybe some people wouldn't be the way they are. Tell the truth, shame the devil, right, mama? <laughs> Maybe some people wouldn't act the way they act. Maybe some people wouldn't do the things they do. Maybe some people wouldn't say the things they say. Maybe some people wouldn't do some things and pretend like they're doing it in the name of Jesus. And well, and then the thing is, Sometimes we say that Jesus is king, but we act like we have other kings. Sometimes we say that Jesus is king, and sometimes we say that we follow Jesus, but we act like cash is king, or we act like our jobs are king, or we act like our politics are king, or we act like our position is king, or we act like our st stuff is king, or we act like our church is king, or we act like our, well, you get the picture, don't, don't you? And, and you see, that was the problem in the church at Colossians. They said that they worshiped Jesus as king, but their behavior didn't quite match up. To their words. Okay, maybe we can't get it like that. Maybe that's just too hard to swallow. Maybe, maybe we can't understand it like that because it hits too close to home. And sometimes, Deontes, we don't like to hold up a mirror to ourselves and say, you know, there's something in me that needs to be changed and there's something in me that needs to be transformed because I can't see the, 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 the plank in my own eye, but I can see the speck in my neighbor's eye because, you know, that one over there They've got something in them that needs to be changed. But me and Jesus, we're all right all by ourselves. Eugene Peterson's translation of the message puts it this way. You yourselves are a case study of what Christ does. At one time, you all had your backs turned to God, thinking rebellious thoughts of him, giving him trouble every chance you got. But now... By giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you. 
Christ brought you over to God's side and put your lives together whole and holy in his presence. You don't walk away from a gift like that. You stay grounded and steady in that bond of trust, constantly tuned into that message, careful not to be distracted. There is no other message. There's no other king. Just this one. Okay, maybe you don't get it there either. Maybe, maybe that's not working either. You see, in The Lion King, <laughs> there's, a, there's a, a, a lion cub, Simba, and he's born to King Mufasa, and his best friend is Nala, and they're going to be married at some point, but they don't know it yet. And, and, and Simba and Nala, they're pretty curious. <laughs> and they like to go on adventures, and they like to go and see what they can see and learn what they can learn because they know there's something out there that somebody's not telling them, and they want to go and get ahead of the plan. They want to go and get in front of the king. They want to go and get ahead of the Holy Spirit. They want to go and get ahead of the vision. They want to go and get ahead of what God is doing. They want to go and get ahead of what, the, what is happening right now in the presence of God. They want to go out there because they think that they're ready for what's next. They think that they're ready for the next season, even even though they haven't done the work in this season. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. And then there's Zazu. Hmm. Zazu is a bird whose primary responsibility is to be, let's say, an advisor to the king and babysitter of Simba. Poor bird. Nala and Simba go on an adventure only because Zazu goes alone. And it's the Lion King, so there's a song. Simba says, I'm gonna be a mighty king. So enemies beware. Zazu says, Well, I've never seen a king of beasts with quite so little hair. Simba, I'm gonna be the main event like no king was before. I'm brushing up, I'm looking down. I'm working on my roar. Zazu. Thus far, a rather uninspiring thing. Or, <sighs> Simba, oh, I just can't wait to be king. Zazu, you've rather a long way to go, young master, if you think. Simba says, no one's saying do this. No one's saying be there. No one's saying stop that. No one's saying see here. Zazu says, now see here. <laughs> Zazu says, I think it's time that you and I arranged a heart to heart if this is where the monarchy is headed, count me out, out of service, out of Africa, out, out, uh, just out. This child is getting wildly out of wing. Count me out. Simba says, oh, I just can't wait to be king. Have
Have you ever tried to get too big for your britches? Have you ever tried to get out in front? Have you ever said, I'm ready for this? And somebody in your life who is wiser, who can see over into the next thing, who can see ahead of you says, pulls your little coattail and says, just wait a minute. And you say, no, 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 no. I'm ready. I know what I'm doing. No, no, no. And you say, oh, I just can't wait to be king. This is what is happening in the church in Colossians, and this is what is happening in our church today. We have all decided that we've got this thing. We have all decided that I know on my terms how to follow Jesus. And Jesus is saying to us, remember who I am. Remember that I am king. Remember I'm the one whose hands were pierced. Remember I'm the one whose feet were nailed to the cross. Remember, I'm the one who died for you. Remember, I am the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last. I am the Alpha and the Omega. You go ahead and be king. See how that works for you. There's one message. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. It's that Jesus has come and come to give us life in abundance. It's that Jesus has come to transform us. It is that Jesus has come to rescue us. It is that Jesus has come to turn darkness into light. It is that Jesus has come to deliver us. It is Jesus has come to give us a fresh anointing. It is that Jesus has come to save us from this abyss called life. It is that Jesus has come to set us free. That is the message of Jesus. It is that Jesus is love. It is that God is good. It is that God's mercy endures forever. And that there are no qualifiers in any of that. Paul reminds us that we don't get to change that message. We don't have enough standing in this world. We haven't put in enough sacrifice and we can't. It is the gospel that transforms all by itself. You can't sprinkle anything else in it. You can't make it comfortable for you. That literally changes the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ and makes it not the good news anymore. It makes it somebody else's ology. It makes it me ology. Instead of theology, it makes it my news instead of the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the gospel, the good news of Jesus that saves, that restores, that transforms, that sets free. You don't get to change it because you are not king. Everybody look left. Everybody look right. Everywhere I look, I'm standing in the spotlight. Oh, I just... I'm good without being 
the King. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being in worship today. Thank you for making this a priority during your summer. And we can't wait to see you next week. Now remember, Paul used a song of praise to remind the people of God and the church of Colossians that they are not king. So when you feel the need, when we feel the need to think it's all on us and to think that we are the king, all we need to do is praise the Lord. Amen? 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 So go forth from this place and not from the presence of God in an attitude of praise, singing praise to the most high God. Now to the one who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the most high God, be all honor, glory, and praise now and forever. And the people of God sang, let the show.